Hello everybody, this is uh, Josep Romero and in this video I will uh, explain you how to create the values of a confident interval that uh, was selected. So if you are interested please uh, stay tuned and I will explain how I made it. Well here we are in Power BI, this is uh, the last <coughs> dashboard I, I made in the, in the last video. And the first thing that uh, I'm going to do is to duplicate the, the dashboard and uh, delete all the values that uh, I don't need for, for this study. Right, so the first thing that uh, we have to do is to create a slicer with the values of the confidence interval that we need. In this case, uh, we will use what is parameter. We will call this confidence interval person. And the values that uh, we'll add here is the minimum 10 and the maximum 90. So accept, and uh, now we have the slider. As you can see, the values comes from 10 to 90. Okay, we will select 50, for example. And the uh, next thing uh, I have to do is to create the confidence area that... Uh, we will get from the maximum value to the left. Not, not, not within the two values, but from the maximum value to the left. This will be the, the confidence, uh, the confidence area that, that, that we select here, plus half of the two triangles, means plus one, one triangle here. So to do this, uh, we need uh, the following formula. We will add a new measure. We will call this confidence area and this will be equal to our confidence interval or the value of our confidence in interval and uh, plus uh, in this case 100 that is the complete area of, of the curve minus the confidence area value uh, divided by 2 not necessary and all of our formula will be divided by 100 to to get the, the result in percentage so this divided by 100 so we will obtain the area at the left of the curve that is here. Okay. So in this case, the confidence area is 0 0.75 because we already select 50. The rest is 50, means that the area outside this is 50, divided by 2 is 25, plus 50 is 75, 0 0.75. Once we have this area, we have, we, we have to do the, the, the opposite procedure as we already made to construct the curve. This means we have the area, this means these values here, and we need to obtain the x value that uh, make the the area at the left, at, sorry, at the right of the curve. So we will look here at the 0 0.75, and we will obtain the value. But as you can see, in our normal distribution table, there is not 0 0.75. So this means this that if I made a look look up value of this value, it will return us an error. So that we have to do is create a new table from this in which this probability area should be the values that appears here once we select the values of our confidence interval. Uh, these values I will put here uh, three decimals and you can see that these values are always the last, the, the, the third, the third uh, decimal here is always zero or five. So in case of 31, this ends on 5, in case of 69, it ends on 5, in case of 70, ends on 0. So we have to convert these values on a three decimal values in which the last number should be 0 or 5. So let's do it. Well, uh, edit queries here in this uh, query we have our frequency distribution. And we will uh, not duplicate, but reference. So we have a new 
new table duplicate the foundry frequency distribution. We will call this as a, a confidence frequency distribution. And uh, to make these values with three decimals and the last one will be zero or five, I made the following procedure. First of all, I rounded these decimals to uh, this, these values to three decimals. Then this result I multiply it by two. Round this result to two decimals. Two decimals. Divide the result by two. And as you can see now, we have exactly our goal. 0 0.500, 505, 510, 510. But uh, as you can see, we have uh, some results that are exactly the same as this one. 0 0.51 is duplicated here. So the next step is to group by this column and the new column that we will call set average will be the average of the column of x value, this one. Okay, here is it, here it is, 0 0.25 with the set average. So we have all that uh, we need. The only thing that I will make is reorder the columns. And then this probability area will be renamed to rounded, for example, rounded area. Well, then close and apply. values are on the rounded area we will make it in three decimals just to make exactly the same decimals as here one two and three and you can see that uh, the results are quite similar in case of 0 0.13 0 0.550 0 0.3 0 0.552 are quite quite similar results so we will use this table to obtain our set average so we will make it we'll add a new measure and the measure will be set from half and alpha. This is the, the correct uh, name that normally is, is given to the statistics uh, studies. And this will be, of course, the lookup value. The result column name should be the set average that is that we are looking for the search column name should be the rounded area and the value we have to look for is the confidence area so in this case we will obtain the value of set set of half a, half an alpha so this is the value that we need this case if we select 0 0.850 we will look here 0 0.850 this one and obtains 1.04 right okay so in this case this is the value of a normal distribution curve from the right side of the interval the value of the left side of the of the interval will be exactly the same but with the minus symbol minus 1.04 so now that uh, we have to create is the values that are equivalent on our normal distribution curve from our values this this table that, that we already have here this is our real values and as uh, we get the formula to obtain the set values that the, the normal on a normal distribution zero one to get the set in this case we have to find the x so we have to Get the x by this this formula here and of course we will get two two values one from the interval with set of half and alpha positive and the other one with set of half and alpha uh, negative so we will add these two values here uh, the first one uh, we will call uh, x1 confidence and this uh, value will be according to the formula our set from half and alpha, multiply it by the standard deviation, 
and plus the min. Well, so this will be the, the value of the right of the interval. And we will round this to two decimals because we don't need more than two decimals. So we write a round and two decimals. Well, so now we will get here the value of our maximum, our maximum value of the, of the interval and also uh, to calculate the minimum value of the interval will control c new measure control v this will be x2 confidence and in case of here we don't have uh, we, ha we have to change this for a negative value minus one multiply it by this so we will get the minimum value okay so here we have the two values of our interval right now uh, we have uh, to make uh, another thing that is to put this into the um, into the curve. So we will make it with a new with a new measure. New measure. I will call this area confidence. And as we have two values, we need that our uh, shadow area will be between these two values. So we will add an if statement, but in this case, we have to choose an, with an or statement. And the first will be x1 confidence. This value is less or equal to the values. Remember, we have here a table with the unique values. The values of our normal distribution x value or uh, our x2 confidence value is bigger or equal to the values, exactly, exactly the same, <coughs> the values of our normal distribution table. Okay, then if <coughs> these values are outside of the interval, then blank. So I selected the, the values to, to be out of the interval. And if not, this means inside the interval, then we have to return the f from x means the value of the, of the curve, this one, right? So the only thing that we have to do is to select our curve, make a little bit bigger, and in this, we have to add, add the line values. We don't need the probability area. So now we have the shadow of our, our values. Means in case of I need the, the, the values of a probability interval of 35, our values will be between 187 and 225. If we choose 68%, you can see that our values are quite close to x plus minus one sigma as it should be as you, as, as you know the six around the 68 percent of the of the values equi uh, are at the x plus or minus the standard deviation the final thing that we can do is uh, to create a new measure to present here the the, the, the results of, of our of our values we'll call this uh, for example interval of confidence result and just copy and paste from the formula I already have in this case I have to change this for the confidence interval the value of the confidence interval this one right so here we can present our result of an interval of confidence of 68%, the values are between 163 and 252. If we change the confidence interval, our result will change, and also the area of our distribution curve will change also. Okay, I hope this will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the uh, next video. Thank you very much. Bye.